day 12 here and there's something I've been wanting to talk about for a little while, we're finally here, and that's our screed installation. There's a few reasons I wanna talk about that. First one really being is that screeds, in my experience, are very highly related to uh, poor waterproofing outcomes, failures, and one of the main reasons is that it can be, depending on how consistently it's mixed and what the mix ratio is, a quite an unstable substrate for waterproofing to be applied to. So let's have a talk through how we're building this particular bathroom and we'll start with our drain point here. So what you can see here is the drain flange is still exposed, right? But didn't we waterproof it previously? Well, we did. And that flange is actually down inside here. So you can see we've beveled the waterproofing, uh, sorry, the screed back here to allow this to fit in. It still needs to be grouted in but effectively our flange, if I can get it in there, is gonna sit right there like that, flush with the top of our screed, and our waterproofing is gonna come and connect onto that. And now that's what's known as a double flange system. If I show you quickly, you can see this has actually been cut down here uh, to make sure it's the right size based on the thickness of the screed. Our waterproofing is gonna connect onto that. And the reason we wanna do that, rather than just bringing our waterproofing membrane down across the screed uh, and into the, the single drain point flange is now we actually allow water to shed at both membrane levels. This is really important because say in the rare event we did have a failure of our waterproofing membrane over the screed here, we don't want it to be trapped from making its way towards the drain there. So having two flanges like this can be super effective. And on the note of drain points, let's have a look at what's going on in our shower. So here we go, you can see we've got our strip drain just sitting there in place. It's not fixed at all at the moment, so let's pull it out and see what we've got here. Now, unfortunately we cannot do the same design uh, with the double flange because of the way the strip drain sits in our channel here. So what we're gonna wanna do here, and I did do a little bit of cleaning up around here, is expose our flange because we want our waterproofing which runs across the top of the screed here in our shower, this is actually where the falls are on the screed, the FC sheet below that is dead flat. So water wouldn't easily move to the drain at that level. That's why it's so important to me that we actually have a good, complete, compliant, high performance waterproofing system over our screed here. We bring it across, we turn it down into our flange here. Would be great if we could get those double flanges in here, but there's just no room for it. So we will be connecting our over screed waterproofing completely onto this flange all the way around and sealing it up. And then we will put our strip drain back in just like this. Now you'll notice there is gonna be these gaps here still. We'll talk about how we treat those um, when it comes time for, for tiling. Um, so we'll come back then. Now we also have our underfloor heating here. You can see again, we're gonna be going over the top of screed. We still don't have our electrical cable coming through here for our underfloor heating. We wanna make sure we can get a good seal around that. So I've taken back the screed just here a little bit. So there's plenty of room to move with our, our waterproofing and our sealant when that time actually comes in. Now that's effectively it, except there is one um, major point in this bathroom which I haven't talked about yet, and you probably can't see it just based on this video. So I can tell you that in this shower here, we have a pretty solid fall towards our, our drain, about a one in 100, haven't actually measured it yet, but we'll check that soon. And the area outside the shower here is actually dead flat. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a <laughs> do as I say, not as I do sort of situation because our NCC, our Australian standards, our housing provisions, pretty much everything tells us is that we need to have a fall in our finished floor level for the DTS provisions to be compliant on that pathway. So let's have a look at what we're doing instead here. Now, we're gonna be calling this a performance-based design and I'll explain how we're justifying it. So. There is a whole report that goes behind this, so it's not as easy as just saying a couple of words on camera and then you're compliant. But if we're looking at this as a performance solution, our shower area right in front of us, that's where 99% of our water is going to go. There might be a little bit that splashes out, but it won't be of a volume based on the shower head uh, coming straight down. It won't be of a volume splashing outside of here that will actually accumulate and need to run to a drain under normal use. We do have a shower, uh, 
sorry, a bath over this side, which may get some splashing from time to time. So that's a potential source of water. Uh, it might overflow as well if it's left on. And then we also have a vanity here, which also might overflow. Now, if we have a dead flat floor outside here, doesn't that mean if this overflowing action happens, the water might just run straight past the drain point and straight out our doorway over there? Well, what we're doing to combat that is actually having a, a threshold sort of step up a small ramp at that doorway there. So in the event we did have a certain amount of water coming from our, our bath or from our uh, vanity, the water might want to make its way over towards this door. It's going to hit that little ramp. It might build up a little bit and it's going to make its way back towards that drain. Now, why are we going through all of this hassle and going against the standards? Well, this is a question probably a few of you have raised before, and it's around large format tiles. We buy these uh, particularly large tiles. I can't remember. I think these are uh, 1200 by 600 that are going to be installed here. Um, which look really nice. And then if you actually want to get a compliant fall, one in 100 or one in 80, you have to go and cut lines through all of them. Ends up looking terrible, really takes away from the aesthetic. So that's why we had a look at this and we decided to justify how it's gonna perform on a performance basis. And that's gonna be our plan here. So we will look to do some tests at the end of all of this to really see how well that performance um, has been uh, achieved through this design. So we, we are gonna check it, we are gonna quality control it, and I'll look forward to showing that off to everyone. But so just before we wrap up again today, I do have to stress about this falls. We are doing something performance-based and experimental here. It's not something anyone should take on without being appropriately prepared and having an appropriately qualified consultant or engineer involved. Uh, these things are possible and that's what I'm trying to showcase here, but it's not intended to encourage you to go down this pathway um, without proper uh, planning and understanding of all the things that might go wrong so that your solution does actually perform.